All right, well, today's Math in the News, once again, we are fortunate enough to have somebody visit us, and we have somebody a little extraordinary today. Anna East is a systems testbed engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. She's worked on the Mars 2020 mission for the past two years, building and testing the Perseverance rover and its twin on Earth named Optimism. Once Perseverance lands on Mars, she'll help operate the rover on the surface. So, Anna East, thank you once again. We are more than thrilled to have you as part of our program. Yeah, thank you for having me. I, I, I know that you've got a lot of stuff going on, and tomorrow is going to be a very, very big day for you and everyone associated with NASA. So what I'd like you to do is maybe talk a little bit more about your specific role uh, as an engineer, and how did that start? Right, so uh, like you said, I am a systems testbed engineer, which is a mouthful. <laughs> but in trying to explain that, uh, the rover has a bunch of different pieces, right? It has a flight computer, which is like the rover brain. It has cameras, which are like its eyes. It has a radio that it uses to talk to us and we use to talk to it. Um, it also has batteries, which give it power. It has wheels that it uses to drive and it has a robotic arm. Now, all of these different pieces are built by different teams. My job is to take all of these pieces, put them together, and make sure that they work how we expect them to. Um, you know, when you combine all of these pieces, does it make a rover and does it behave like how we think the rover should behave? So you've got quite a bit on your plate right there. And I know yeah, that you, a, you have been people. working on this for the past two years. But how long has it been since the idea? Like somebody was like, hey, you know what? Let's try to do something on Mars. And how long does that process take? Or is that all encompassing in this past two years? Oh, definitely not in the past two years. Um, from the idea of perseverance, from saying we're going to do another Mars rover and we're going to make a mission to landing tomorrow is somewhere around 10 years, maybe give or take a couple. Um, you know, someone had to come up with the idea of, okay, we're going to do another mission. But then there are a lot of questions that come from that idea. What is this mission going to do? How is this mission going to do what we need it to? And then how do we build it? What's the design that we need to come up with to make sure that this rover, this mission answers the questions that we want it to answer? Um, and then after that design is done, you build all the parts, you put them together, you assemble a rover, and then you test it. Um, and then you launch it, it takes eight months to get to Mars, and then before you know it, you're landing on the planet tomorrow. <laughs> and that's coming pretty soon. So I know there yep. are a lot of things that you would like to accomplish during this, but what is one of the, the, the main purposes of this mission? So this mission has a couple of uh, main objectives. One of them is to search for signs of ancient life on Mars. So we are looking for any signatures that life may have existed billions of years ago on the red planet um, another thing that the rover is doing is taking samples out of rocks on mars where they are about the size of a test tube we're going to store these samples and then a future mission is going to bring them back to earth um, so perseverance itself takes 10 years but searching for ancient signs of life on mars that life could have once existed or you know, bringing samples back. These are things that people have wanted to do for decades or centuries even. Yeah. Okay. Now I know it because it's quite a distance away Mars and what's going on. Can you talk a little bit about the communication time and the reaction time difference? Like if something happens to perseverance, by the time you get that communicated back to you, figure out with optimism kind of what to do and then get that information back. Right. So Earth and Mars orbit the sun. Um, depending on where they are as they're traveling in their circles, they're either closer together or further apart. Uh, right now in this instance, when we land on Perseverance tomorrow, uh, the what we call a light time delay is 12 minutes to get from Earth to Mars. Um, and that is a radio signal that travels at the speed of light, takes 12 minutes to get from Earth to Mars. So if you commanded the rover, it'd take 12 minutes to get there. If the rover did something and sent you the signal back saying, oh, I did a good job, that would also take 12 minutes. And so because of that delay, you can't just command the rover like how you would drive a car in a video game. You have to come up with a plan for what it's going to do, whether that's driving for the day or 
no, you know, program it so that it knows how to get from the top of the Martian atmosphere down to the surface in seven minutes, like it will tomorrow. Okay. And I know, that, I mean, there are a lot of components to this rover. Can you talk a little bit about the purpose of the helicopter? Because I don't think there are a lot of students that are quite aware of this part of this. Yeah, so uh, Perseverance is taking a he little helicopter with it. It's about uh, this big. Um, it's named Ingenuity. Uh, the purpose of the helicopter is to prove that we can fly on Mars. Uh, nothing, and I mean nothing, no airplane, no drone, no helicopter has ever flown on another planet, and this is the first time we're going to be doing something like this. So if we can prove that we can fly a helicopter on Mars, this just enables so many other types of missions. Um, you could send another helicopter with another rover to scout out sites to drive to, or maybe interesting sites that we might want to go to. Um, or you could do another mission that's just a, you know, a bunch of helicopters. It just enables us to do a lot more than what we've done before. I was going to say, just like when drones came into our lives, the amount of capability we had with uh, what we were able to do and look at just rose exponentially, and I'm sure it will with you guys with the helicopters. Yep. Uh, I've got Jack here, and he's got a question for you, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, how can a student like me get prepared for a career with NASA? That is, that's a great question. So I get asked this a lot. I've been trying to come up with a good answer, and I think our rovers could not have been better named. So I think to work at NASA, it takes curiosity and perseverance. You know, scientists and engineers, we're curious. We ask a lot of questions. We want to know the answers. Um, but sometimes getting to that point is hard. The answers that we want to know are hard to get to, and that's where perseverance comes in. Um, you know, math and science are not easy subjects. It's kind of the reason why I like them so much is it's challenging, and I have to think about it. Um, and so working hard at school, um, if you like math and science, just keep going at it and persevere. Well, there you go. Math and science is the key. And like you just said, uh, if it was easy, everybody would do it. But it does take a little uh, intrinsic motivation and curiosity on your part to uh, go ahead and get going with this. On East, we certainly do appreciate the time you took with us. And uh, all the best. I know uh, big things coming. And I know you guys, who knows if you'll even get to sleep tonight with everything going on tomorrow afternoon. So very exciting. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ana East. And, uh, you know, that's a very good point about being curious and asking questions, because I think that's kind of like what you guys do in your gate program, right? Uh, yeah, we have to be very curious, very creative. Right. And you want to know the answers to questions and instead of just having them fed to you, right? You want yeah. to go and find those answers on your own. So there you go. Exactly. Who knows? We may be talking to a NASA engineer here this afternoon. That is today's Math in the News.